I'm almost a little upset with myself that I haven't found this sooner. So typically, in order to power one of these, you need to get 12 volts out of something in order to, you know, give it the juice. And a common thing to do that is with something like this. A power supply takes 120 volts AC and converts it into 12 volts. And this one is a Radio Shack, very old one that I have, 22507, but it can only output about 3 amps at 13.8 volts. A typical HF ham radio is going to require about 20 to 25 amps at 12 volts or 13.8 volts. So there's like a controversy or drama regarding like do you give it 12 volts or 13.8 volts or 12.7 volts. I think in the modern era none of that really matters anymore. If it's between 12 and 13 or maybe even 11.8 and 13.8, it's going to work. It's going to be fun. And so the problem we have in the ham radio industry regarding power supplies is the idea that, you know, cheap power supplies, they cause a lot of spurious harmonics, like switching power supplies will, you know, cut the waveform and it'll cause all kinds of harmonics. And that's true for a lot of cases. And that's why there's a market for linear power supplies, which, which uses big bulky transformers and uh, uh, rectifiers to convert the AC to DC in a very clean fashion, but somewhat inefficient compared to a switching power supply, which do uh, electrical switching um, techniques to get 120 AC down to 12 volts DC. That often comes with a lot of noise specifically for HF radio, especially down in the, um, a lot of times the switching frequencies is like 750 kilohertz. That can have harmonics all throughout the HF band. And so the problem you find with lower cost switching power supplies is that they're noisy. They might be able to supply the power, but you get all this hash and noise, which is no fun. And the other thing you have to be aware of is they have to be able to supply a lot of amperage, especially at the, using for 100 watt HF uh, radio, like a 7300. Now, as the current requirements go up and up and up, the cost goes up and up and up. To, so to get a proper, like a quiet uh, DC switching power supply, you're probably gonna pay anywhere between 50 and almost $200 um, depending on the bells and whistles. But I think the most basic one, you probably will pay about $100. But wait, there's an alternative. So I said in the beginning, I'm hating myself for not finding this earlier, but here you have a server grade power supply that provides 12 volts at a maximum of 75 amps. I paid $20 for this and it arrived at my house in three days during coronavirus pandemic. That's, that's crazy. And apparently the, these things have been around since the 2010s. So if you look on the label, this is a DPS 1200 FB1 model. Um, they're, they're made in China, but and just look. So at 110 volts to 120 volts input, it has an output of 75 amps max. That is crazy. Now you might be thinking, if this can put out 75 amps and this one can only put out three, what the heck is going on here? Well, here's what's going on. This is a Radio Shack power supply designed for CB radios and has a very, 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 very small market. Now this is a server grade power supply designed to power servers, computers that have to be on and reliable and they have, they're prone to noise and um, jitter and other, other functions of, of electromagnetism and they have to be clean. What's in here is an incredibly well-designed circuit and it is supplied more than enough power to run an HF station like this. But here's a slight issue. You notice I've already done my modifications here, but the output of this uh, power supply isn't a standard, you know, like binding post like this. It's these, uh, it's a PCB trace, which contacts these massive PCB traces. Now, when you buy this and you plug it in, it's not going to output 12 volts. A lot like uh, uh, other PC power supplies, you have to fake it to make, make it think that it should be providing that 12 volts. And so you, what you have to end up doing is soldering a small resistor. I've used a 470 ohm resistor in my case, uh, but you can use anything between 3000 or 300 and a kilo ohm. Although the kilo ohm actually didn't work, but the 470 did just fine. Between these uh, solder pads, number 33, 34, 35, and 36. I'll link to a, a guide to actually do that. And then to actually get power leads onto these PCB traces, what I ended up doing is drilling a few holes for some machine screws, putting those through and just tightening that, them down with, with some hardware. 
and, and Bob's your uncle. So what I'm going to do in this video is compare and contrast the uh, noise and specifically its capability to actually run like a 100 watt full lady cycle on my 7300. Hopefully nothing blows up. Uh, I have a dummy load. It's a saltwater dummy load that I've actually measured on a VNA to be very, very well uh, tuned connected to the 7300. And this sort of serves like kind of a noise as a noise pickup. As you notice, if I get put this like basically right on top of the power supply, the broadband noise really starts to show up, but if I move it away, it generally goes away. There are these, like, I've noticed this cum of frequencies, uh, and that's there regardless of my really annoying fluorescent lights, if they're on or if they're off. I'll run through the, the various bands to see what the noise floor looks like. So if that is that Radio Shack power supply, then here is what a battery looks like. All of those combs are all gone. And that's because I'm plugged in to an actual battery over here. I do still notice quite a bit of RFI, but that's probably because of my house. So if that was the battery, here is the new HP server grade power supply. Now there is this unusual looking like wideband hash here on this particular frequency that seems to be kind of falling downwards, but that wasn't nearly as annoying as the uh, as the comb. Here I've placed the dummy load directly on top of the HP server grade power supply and you do see quite a bit of that kind of looks like it's going back and forth like scanning almost but if I move this away it's almost completely gone. Switching back to the battery just look how much cleaner the signal is and switching back to the Radio Shack power supply quite a bit more noisy but that's still not as noisy as the HP uh, server power supply yet it still can't hold a candle to a battery. In order to like persuade myself that these power supplies are producing are the are the sources of the noise, I'm going to take the dummy load and place it on top of these power supplies, which are unloaded, by the way. But you can see there's a monstrosity of noise, almost an S3, and on the HP one. It's an S1, but there's still quite a bit of noise. So does this mean this power supply is absolute garbage? Well. I don't think so. Sure, we're testing it on the bench and it seems to be noisy, but our dummy loads are really close to the power supplies. It's also really close to these blinking fluorescent lights and who knows what else in my house. Chargers and, and um, refrigerators and HVAC and dehumidifiers and right now the dishwasher is going on, so who knows what's if that's producing any uh, RFI. So let's actually go out in the backyard, throw an antenna in the tree, and compare the battery and these two power supplies to see if there's any difference in the uh, noise floor. So to explain the setup and pardon my backyard, it's currently a construction site. What I've got going on is the 7300s out here, the battery, the HP power supply, and the and the uh, whatever that one is, the Radio Shack. In-fed half-wave antenna, and that's just going up into the tree to some length, and then I have a counterpoise of random whatever length going off on that way. I'm connecting to the power from the back of my home with an extension cord. I'm gonna have to individually connect each of the power supplies, but you know, for science. I literally just noticed that my pectana <laughs> came loose. Time to break out the butane, dude. There we go. That should work now. Okay, here we are with all that setup, and I'm currently plugged into the battery just to get an idea of what's what's going on in the spectrum. And I already have a very, very high noise floor. This is why I don't operate uh, HF from home mainly, because there's just like loads and loads and loads of QRM, but actually there's quite a bit of CW I'm seeing. There we go. So it's not all bad. Go ahead and try the Radio Shack power supply. Here's a Radio Shack power supply, and you'll notice not much different. I don't even see the combs from before. So is really all that stuff down in the basement all hype? Go up a little higher into the band and see, is that noise from the power supply? There's a single sideband station. There's another station. So it's not, it doesn't look all that bad. Let's go up higher into like 10 megahertz, or uh, t uh, 10 meters. That looks like noise, but is that from the power supply? Let's go back to the battery and find out. Hmm, no, it's just coming from the environment. Go back to the Radio Shack power supply. Let's take a wide view of the spectrum. It looks like these frequency comes are happening uh, every uh, two, uh, 20, 250 kilohertz or so because they perfectly space this 500 kilohertz spectrum or this whole one megahertz spectrum. So I see one, 250, 500, 750, one megahertz. So I don't think that's one of these power supplies, but it could be a power supply somewhere else in the neighborhood, but it's not one of mine. Now, if I go back to the battery, are those still there? Yeah, it looks like they're still there. So it's not me. 
Okay, let's try the HP power supply. Hmm, does the noise floor look considerably higher? I think it does. Let me jump back to the battery and see how it looks like. So this is back on the battery. Maybe it wasn't the power supply. Maybe it was. It's very hard to tell. Now I'm gonna go to the HP power supply. Still not so bad. So right now, I'm on the HP power supply and we're drawing 10.9 uh, watts at 12.3 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and tune. And it went up to 90 watts. Now I'm on CW mode and I'm gonna send a uh, full 100 watt signal of my call sign and then testing on this clear frequency 14042.04. perfectly happy with that. So I've been playing around with it a little bit more and I'm really not finding too much in the way of QRM from this power supply. There's obviously tons and tons of QRM from my local area. The power supply seems to be pretty much just about as clean as the battery. All of the noise was basically coming from everything in my house. Now here it's, I get quite a few ham radio signals and other shortwave signals as well as noise from you know the neighbors and stuff so it's not terrible so to summarize I'm actually quite impressed at this it was literally $20 I get a hundred amps out of it and there's hardly any noise in fact there's even less noise than the Radio Shack power supply so I'm sold and I think the supplies are still really high so if you want a low-cost power supply and you want to do a little DIY um, then this might be the project for you I will caution um, it's dealing with some high, high current, um, 12 volts. So you have to be very, very, very careful. And I'm not responsible for, you know, catching anything on fire at your house. Thanks for watching. This is N0SSC 73.